Okay, floss tube, run in five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! I hope you all had a Merry Christmas, a fabulous New Year. I'm Tanya the Starlet Stitcher and welcome to my cross stitch channel where today we're having the first annual finishing parade. So what is a finishing parade? All right, so I typically don't have a whole lot of whips going on at once. And so throughout this last year, I didn't really have whip parades because it would be like, here, here's my three projects. Now you saw everything. That's not very fun. So I decided to do a finishing parade instead. And this will be a place where you'll get to look back and see everything that I've done throughout all of 2022. And that's going to be very fun. And so when I thought about doing this, I was like, at last I see the light. Like, why didn't I think about this before? So we're gonna start that starting now and let's get started. Now I'm going to be filming this in two sections because some of the stuff that I stitched this year, I'm going to be wrapping up and giving away as presents for Christmas. And so I'm filming that now and then the rest later, more towards the last week of December. And so you'll probably see me changing clothes. Maybe my hair will be different. I might be in a different part of the house. The lighting might be different, well, whatever. But that's what's going on. I'm gonna show you these things to you right now. And so let's get started. Alrighty, so this first one, this is Flea Market Baskets by Lori Holt of Be In My Bonnet for It's So Emma. And this was stitched on 25 count cloud vintage cloth Lugana by Lori Holt in the called for DMC colors. I love this. It was so fun to stitch it and I'm in love with how it came out. So soft and squishy and it's big and I love it forever. <laughs> but I decided that I'm going to give this to one of my grandmothers for Christmas instead, because I can always stitch myself another one. But she will like this a lot also. So I decided to share the love. Mm -hmm. And this fabric that I decided to finish along the sides and the back, this is the Chelsea's Checks in the gray. And it looks so good. Oh, she's gonna love it. Okay, and so next up, I had the Tiger and Bee. This was an 11 count pre-printed kit by It's Stitch. I did several pillows this year. I wanted them all to come out as 14 by 14s. This one was a little bit smaller design, and so I put the borders on there to make it a little bit bigger. And this yellow fabric came from Walmart. And there we go. It's so cute. This one is going to my daughter's cousin and she's going to love it. Mm. My daughter has a lot of cousins. Just a heads up. Mm. Okay. Mm. The next one is Unicorn. This is also an 11 count pre-printed fabric kit by May Deer. This is also finished into a 14 by 14 pillow. And I chose the blue fabric for this. Now these fabrics for these smaller pillows, these all came in a fat quarter bundle at Walmart, so they'll all be in the same bundle. I used two bundles, one for the top piece, one for the bottom, and then cut off the extra, and I have those saved. But that's how I did that one. It's super cute. Okay, and we have the elephant and owl. This is an 11 count pre-printed pre fabric kit by Madeir. I thought the owls on here were just, I mean, look how crazy like their hair and how messed up their feathers are all over them and these little curly cues sticking out. And I'm just, I mean, <laughs> they were just so adorable. But the little girl is going to love this. This is going to another girl cousin of my daughter's. And the fabric on this one is purple. Oh. Mm, they're so soft. 
Okay, and the last one going to a little girl is Christmas. <laughs> is the skateboard, skateboard giraffe. This one is also 11 count pre-printed fabric kit by Maydeer and it's finished in pink. And look at it. I think these all came out so good. They're going to love them as much as I did making them and gifting them and it's going to be fun. Okay, so this one, this is Corgi Caboodle by Plum Street Samplers. And this gift is for my stepmother this Christmas. I had to do this one because these dogs, they look exactly like hers. All right. I did change the flosses. I decided instead of using DMC to just pull leftover fancy flosses that I had in my stash. And so I'll put that information down below in the description box. The fabric is... Also, some leftovers that I had from another project. So, I'm using up what's in my stash. Okay, that's what we need to do. If we have it, we may as well use it, right? And it's a 32 count Mercedes Lugana by Picture This Plus. I changed the flower colors to reds instead of pinks because her favorite color is red. So if your favorite color might be purple or blue or whatever, you can go ahead and do that and it's going to look really good. So there you go. Never be afraid to change the colors in the chart. Make it how you want it and like it. And there you go. Okay, and lastly, I made some puppy ornaments for my mom. And here is how they turned out. Look at it. I am in love with these. Okay, so these are the Sharpay puppy from the Encyclopedia of Puppies by Cooler Design Studio. I stitched them on 28 count white opalescent Lugana by Zweigart. And so let me see if I can get the sparkle in there. Yeah, see? They've all got sparkle in there. And what I did was, this is the original charting colors. So then call it, so I'm calling this one cream. This one is the fawn. This one's the red. And then this one's the black. Now I decided to stitch these because my mom has been a breeder of Sharpay for the last 30 years. And so they have a special meaning to us. I have two and you know, obviously she's got a whole bunch. <laughs> But, you know, Sharpay stuff is kind of hard to find. And so I saw that this puppy was in there in that chart book. I was like, you know what? I got to do those. And I'm going to change the colors so she can have the colors of all the ones that she has. All the ones that she has. Now, she does also have lilac ones, too. But mostly, these are the colors that she gets. And so those were the ones that were going to be done this year. I might go back and do the lilac and the blue, but I'm not sure that these four for right now, that was a good start. And so that's what I did. Um, these are six inch tart tins. So they are fairly large, but they look good. They'll look good on your big tree. The ribbons, those came from Walmart. I had those in my stash that I picked up on last year's Christmas clearance over there. And these jingle bells, which they do actually jingle. I have a thing about mm, ringing jingle bells at Christmas, and so I had to put them on there. Those are one inch in size, and those I got in a bulk package off of Amazon. I'll put, I'll put the link down below. And so, yeah, I haven't finished anything in tart tins before, so this was kind of a different experience. I was I was like, I know what I want to do with them, but I've never finished things that way before, and so it's going to be a little bit weird. I'm not, not really sure what I'm going to be doing, but let's give it a try and kind of wing it. And I think they came out pretty good. The only thing that I need to change for the next time, I think, is I think that if I did more layers of batting in there, it could come out a bit better. And also, um, I didn't leave myself enough margin whenever I stitched them on that piece of fabric. I thought I did, 
but I didn't because when you're finishing something circular, you need more fabric edges along those edges to be able to wrap it around. And I didn't think about that at the time. So my edges were a little bit funky, but that's what trim is for, guys. <laughs> So you cannot, you can't really tell. I mean, you could kind of tell that I could have did with some more batting in there. But you know what? Overall, they came out really cute. I got some finishing experience on doing tart tins on the back. This is some some fabric from Walmart. I guess if you had a small enough design, you could also face your cross stitch out on this side and then have, um, you know, attach some decorations around it and have this be your frame around there. I did it this a ways. But there's a lot of stuff that you could do with these. But yeah, so I liked having that that experience of finishing something in a in a new way. And I really enjoyed stitching them. I might stitch some for myself. I haven't decided yet. I have a black one and a fawn one. That's Batman and Cricket. <laughs> But yeah, I enjoyed doing these and my mom is absolutely going to love them. <laughs> but those are all of the gift stitches. And so I'm going to fast forward a few weeks here. <laughs> so it's going to be a few weeks for me. It'll be like two seconds for you and I'll be right back. <laughs> Bye. Okay guys, I'm back. It's been like four or five weeks for me <laughs> and like two seconds for you. <laughs> Now this is Brian, this is my son, and he's gonna help me today, which is the rest of my finishes for 2022, because they're kinda all over the place and some of them are heavy, and so I need an extra pair of hands so that I can at least attempt to stay on the camera while we work through this. Okay, so they'll be coming up in no particular order. I'll try to timestamp everything all down below, so if, you know I did something, or you see it in the thumbnail, and you want to go right to it, you can easily find it by clicking the link below. I probably should have said that at the beginning of the video, but I don't think that I did, so I'm telling you that now. Anyhow, so, so all of these following items are the ones that are staying in my house. They were not given away as Christmas gifts, and so that's why you're seeing this video now, later, after the other one. And hopefully I can figure out how to mash them together for you. If not, you're getting two separate videos. Alrighty, let's go. Okay, so this is Brian. I call him Fuzzy, that's his nickname. So if you hear me call him that during the video, that's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we're gonna start with my Pandemic by Long Dog Samplers because it's the biggest and heaviest one. Okay. Help me with it. And here we are. This one was a long time in the making. It's on a 28 count Haunted Lugana by Picture This Plus. It's really big. Really big, guys. <laughs> All of my finishing details are gonna be down below. Okay, I'm trying to show them in the video fuzzy so when i move stuff move with me okay mm -hmm. but, uh, i added fabric to the tops and bottoms because the height was a little bit weird i did frame it myself so it's not perfectly straight but i think i did pretty good considering it is as big as it is this is i think a 24 by 36 frame and there we go the DMC is 3657, 3756. Check the details below because sometimes I don't remember them, but I do have them below in the description box. So when in doubt, check below. Oh, it's so big, but it's awesome. And Brian really loves it. Okay, so we're going to move this to the side here for a second. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Can you start taking stuff from over there and bringing them over here, right here? Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's how we're going to do this. Alrighty. And so moving on. This year, I also 
did Christmas Rules by Lizzie Kate. It is so cute. I love this so much. Here we go. I like that cute little reindeer. It's freaking adorable. I love it. We got all the buttons on there and everything. And the fabric that I used to border up this frame is Chelsea's Checks. I don't know, do I want to go like this? I don't know, that's kind of weird. These long, tall, skinny ones are kind of weird to show on camera, you know, but I'll do it as best as I can. Ah, there we go, sort of. I'll scroll up for you again. This was so fun. that okay and so moving on to the next thing is gonna be Halloween rules by Lizzie Kate and this is how that one came out and they're in the same size frame I did have to make the borders a little bit different to have them fit in there because I don't remember which one's a little bit bigger or smaller but yeah this one is done with Chelsea's checks also You guys have a fabulous view of my living room and kitchen, guys. <laughs> but it's, they're so cute. I mean, I could not do them. Hmm? Those tiny black buttons. Oh man, they were kind of, they were kind of difficult to put on there, but I got them on there. They, I do have them stitched on there. <laughs> And there we go with the glass. These are glassed. I put spacers into the frames on both of these, the Halloween and the Christmas rolls. So I have the spacers linked below that I use that are just, you cut them to size, peel and stick them in there. And shockingly, the frame still closes with no additional hardware, which I was not expecting, but mm, see. Mm, and then these little hangers, those came on the, those came on the frame already, so I didn't have to buy those either. But yeah, so we are all good to go. I didn't get either one of these done in time for the seasons this year, but I will have them for next year, and they will be up. Okay, next up, I've got Nutcracker Village by Country Cottage Needleworks. I stitched this as a sow with country with a with fat quarter shop. And so this was almost the whole year long project. But it's really cute and I loved doing it. My favorite one was the music Thor with the flute, because that is what I played whenever I was in high school and middle school too. Well, there we go for Nutcracker Village. Okay, can you start putting those ones back over there on the table since I'm done with those ones? I did Bloom Where You're Planted by Lindy Stitches. Now this one I had to do because it just really fit my situation at the time and I love skunks. And then you've got the cat in there with the skunks. So the whole idea is, is to make the most of whatever it is that you're going through, alrighty? Now this one I did not use the called for flosses. I changed them to stash colors, which I'll put down below in the description box. And I didn't use red, I used a purple instead. And there you go. They're so cute. I love it. Okay, and we have Gather Here by Liz Matthews. I loved doing this one. This is a 32 count Murmur Lugano by Picture This Plus, and the floss is 2 over 2 with DMC 3371. And this one has a couple of mistakes, but I fudged it, and you can't really tell unless you know where to look. <laughs> 
but I love this one. I need to actually get this hung up. I don't have any hanging hardware on it though, so we'll have to do that later today too. We just recently got in the house a couple months back and not everything is all the way in order yet. Okay, and so next up, I've got a little tote box because I did the season two, a year of celebrations by hands-on design and I finished them into little pillows. So I have my finishing details down below in the description box. But we've got January, February, March, my personal favorite, because that's when I got married. We were married on St. Patrick's Day, so that's really easy to remember. But I like, I don't know, I just like how this one came out. I like it. So if you've got a favorite, let me know below. April, May, June, July, August, September. October, November, and December. Alrighty, and so like I said, the uh, details are down below in the description box. But those were super fun, super cute, and I learned to hand sew shut the top of pillows on those ones, and I got a lot of practice as well as I also hand stitched the ribbons around the ones where it goes all the way around. So now I've got experience doing that too. <laughs> Alrighty, another project that I did was I did Slava Ukraini and that was a free chart put out by Long Dog Samplers. <laughs> and so this is how I finished that. I changed the little the chart to take off the words so that it would I could have it out like all the time if I want to. And I just reversed <laughs> like the crow and the sunflower and stuff across here. <laughs> and that is how I finished it into this little pillow with sunflowers on the back. <laughs> and there we go on that one. <laughs> Next up, we have Sunflower House by Teresa Kogut. <laughs> this is a 32 count Mercedes Lugana by Picture This Plus with the called for flosses. I stitched this one over two. <laughs> And this frame is from Walmart. Okay, this one is support group. The chart is by Lori Holt for It's So Emma. And this was for October Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I believe. And so I went ahead and stitched along with this. My fabric was a 25 count pewter Lugana, I, I think Witchell. Again, check the description box below because I'm not always accurate about that. And this also was a frame from Walmart to frame it in. These kind of looked like swimsuit tops to me. And so I wanted something kind of beachy. And so this is what I went with and I think it looks great. Okay, can you start putting them over there again? I'm getting a little bit full over here. Okay, so we've got the Curious Mermaid by Autumn Lane Stitchery. This is one of my first stitches I finished this year. And she came out great. This is a 28 count Jade Lugana by Picture This Plus. I stitched two over two with the call for flosses. And on this uh, petite treasure braid, which is where you see all of the gold, I used two strands. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to use only one or two, but to me, just one looked a little bit thin. So I went ahead and I used two. I think the called for fabric might have been a 32 count, but I used 28. So maybe that's why I needed two strands of the, <laughs> of the petite treasure braid in any case. <laughs> My strategy on that was I stitched all the way around where that was going to be going in at, and then I stitched them in there once all the surrounding stitches were in. 
I didn't want to be poking in and out from where the metallics were at, if that makes any sense. Oh yeah, I forgot. I had a fudge in here too. I did something weird around here and so I had to realign it back up. You can probably check out previous videos while I was stitching this and I get into it, into what exactly I had did to kind of mess it up. And I was like, oh no, it's not going to line up. The borders is weird and and that needs to come down in the right spot. But that was a whole thing at the time that I was stitching it. I was like, well, we're going to make it work. And we did. And this frame is a Hobby Lobby frame. And there she is. That will be going up in the girls' room. Again, like I said, we haven't exactly got around to hanging up all of our things yet. So that will be a work in progress. Okay, I've got Halloween Quaker by Leela Studio. This was also done more towards the beginning of this year. And there it is. This is done on a 32 count Sprite Lugana by Picture This Plus. I stitched one over two. And I did back stitch a couple of the things because the Sprite, it's hard to tell on camera, but it is a very, very light lilac color. And so some of my things needed a little bit of help to pop out more. Now, if I was to do this again, I would go with more a lavender color for the fabric. But I worked with what I had, and so I backstitched the moon. I made the spider web a different color, and I backstitched the ghost as well. Otherwise, I left all of the flosses as they were, and when I backstitched each thing, I just pulled a color that was already used elsewhere in the chart. <laughs> And that web was something else, I'll tell you. I think it's like based on like an eyelet. And so that was kind of interesting doing that. It's not 100% right, but you know what? Spider webs aren't all perfect anyways, and so we went with it. One of my spiders has a crooked hair on his head too, but hey, you know. <laughs> it's super cute, I love it. It... It makes me want to kind of pull out another one of her ones. Like I have the Christmas one and I have the spring one too that she just came out with in the last market, uh, Nashville market. Uh, so I have that one too. I don't know when I'll do them, but I definitely want to. It was really fun. And so now, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing the other ones. Okay, now we're getting down to the bottom of our pile here. All right. I also did Long May She Wave by Stitching with the Housewives, okay? Now it's a little bit hard to show you here because I have my camera a bit high up now, but this easel will sit on a table. And the tray sits in the easel like so. And so it'll sit on there. Like that. Okay, you can't see it all, but I, you know, that's kind of the way that it is. And this does pull off because I have magnets on there like that. I don't have another design that will fit on that tray like this does, but if I do, I wanted the option of being able to switch it out. There's just a really big magnet there covered with felt because it was a little bit too strong so I put the felt on there to kind of you know so I could actually pull it off without the glue coming undone and then I have a washer on the back like that and then it just sticks on there like so and so this was the first time my first time doing this kind of a, a finish and so I got experience doing a few several kinds of different things this year but my husband loves this one this one actually does have a place in the house already um it goes up on top of my kitchen cabinets because there's like a place where you can put stuff up there okay hang on guys sorry if you get seasick but i want to show you this see there's my howdy bear up there but yeah so that's where my uh 
my little truck goes and my husband loves it. <laughs> so that's why it's up there. Okay, and here we go. Another one that I did was Autumn Love. This too was by Lori Holt for It's So Emma. <laughs> And this was a fat quart, uh, stitch along with fat quarter shot. I did this on a 25 count potato Lugana. I believe this was a Wichel fabric. Check below. And just the regular DMC flosses that it calls for. Super fun, relatively quick because the holes are nice and easy to see and stuff. It is really big. But when you're working on it, you do get tend to get a lot done. Super cute. I love this one. It's found permanent residence on like my, my uh, cabinets that have all my cross stitchy stuff on them. So yeah, I like it a lot. Mm. Okay, is that the last one, Fuzzy? Mm. Ah. Oh. Mm. I almost forgot one of the best ones. It's a good thing I have a helper today. Okay, it's another big one. Hmm? Land That I Love by Teresa Kogan. Hmm? That would have been so sad if I forgot to put this in the video. But here we go. Try and get the whole thing in there. Now this one, because it is what it is, we have like a whole patriotic thing for our house. And so I wanted it to be done really nice. And I knew I wanted to have like the double mat and stuff like that. So I did have Hobby Lobby frame this. They used a frame from off their shelf, but I put museum glass. I got the double matting and all of that and had them put it all together for me. <laughs> But it came out really nice. I love it. This was a 32 count Silvery Moon Lugana by Witchel, I think. And I stitched this two over two. And so also down below, I put how much floss that I actually used for this because it was quite a bit more than what it called for but I really like how it came out. Huh? And so there we go, Land That I Love by Teresa Kogan. Huh? Okay, the next up is my husband's personal favorite. Huh? This is American Deer. And this was an 11 count stamped fabric kit that I found off of Amazon. It might not have even had the name American Deer. It didn't really have a title at all. I just call it American Deer because it's a deer and a flag. And this one I did frame myself. The frame is from Hobby Lobby. I cut the mat myself, which it was really hard to do. So I've got some rough edges there in the corners. That stuff was really stiff. So that's why I decided to have Hobby Lobby do it for land that I love because on this project, it was not perfect, but for this, it was okay. I wanted the land that I love to come out really good. So that's why I did decide to go a different route on that. And there it is. Now this one is full coverage in case if you couldn't tell from looking at it. It's 11 count, so I stitched full coverage 11 counts with four strands instead of the three that they say, just because I like to have the fuller, co the fuller coverage in there and not see no whites. There it is. So that one came out really good. My husband loves it, especially with the frame. It's kind of woodsy. Hmm? And then the very last one. Now this one, okay, so I forgot to say about American Deer. American Deer is the only one out of all of these stitches that I've shown you in this video that I did not start in 2022. I brought this with me from fall of 2021. 
So this one I had in progress already at the new year of 2022. <laughs> Everything else that you've seen, I started and stitched this year, 2022. All right? <laughs> so it wasn't, I started them five years ago. I actually stitched all of this this year. <laughs> okay? <laughs> And yes, I had a lot of time on my hands. I was living in a camper at the time. That being said, my last one is You Are the Boss by Lori Holt. This one was a stitch along as well earlier this year. And I wasn't doing quilty stuff at the time, but like I wanted something really easy to stitch on and keep myself occupied at the time. And I was like, yeah, I'll just stitch that and then put it away. And so this is the only one that I have not FFO'd. So whenever I do actually FFO this one, which I probably will now because I did recently get started into the whole collecting quilt fabrics and trying to sew things together and stuff like that. So. I don't know. When I do FFO this, I'll show it to you again. But I did stitch and finish it this year. So it's going into this finish parade. Okay? Because that's where it belongs. And so with that said, that is everything that I stitched and finished throughout 2022. I hope you enjoyed seeing everything that I've worked on. And if you haven't seen me before... Go ahead and click like, subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon. <laughs> um, if you were here throughout all of 22 and 22, and you see me working on all of these. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that you're all looking forward to my progress on the new stuff in 2023. <laughs> okay, so I'll see you all again here in a couple of weeks in the new year. <laughs> I hope you all had a fabulous one, a very Merry Christmas, and have a fantastic New Year, and nothing but good luck throughout this whole year. I know the last couple of years have not been that great for a lot of people, but it can only go up from here. And so with that said, I love you all. I'll see you again here in a couple of weeks, and bye-bye for now. Hmm?